I have here two objects. First of all, at the top, we have a car, and maybe it's moving at some velocity v to the right. We also have, uh, although it's not just really a rock, this is really an asteroid, which we can maybe consider traveling in deepest, darkest space, well away from any sort of gravitational fields or planets. And basically, these two things might both be moving with a certain velocity. However, just because something is moving, moving with a velocity doesn't actually mean it needs a force to keep moving. But here on Earth, if we have a car which is moving forward with a certain velocity, it also needs a, a forward force to keep it moving. And this might be perhaps the thrust from an engine. As soon as that thrust dry, dies away, the car tends to slow down. But the reason that this is moving uh, with a certain velocity forward, and let's say this is the constant velocity, is because this thrust force is balanced by the drag force, which is acting in the opposite direction. And this is a really good example of Newton's first law. An object is going to keep moving with a constant velocity, provided there's no net force acting on that object. And if you have an object, again, even though there's no force propelling it forward, there's nothing sort of slowing it down either. So this object here, even though there's no force acting on it, will keep moving at a constant velocity. This is all summarised really nicely in Newton's first law from uh, sort of 1687, so a long time ago. And he basically said that an object will remain at rest or it will move at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a net force. And therefore, this uh, space rock that we might consider, if there's no net force acting on it, it will just keep moving at the same velocity until uh, another force acts on it, which might speed it up or slow it down. But what about an example with a cup of tea? Okay, let's think about a nice straightforward example. Uh, here we have a mug of tea, which is just resting on the table I have down here. And if we think about what's happening, basically I've got the table and I've got uh, the mug resting on top of it, and we can maybe think about the forces which are acting on it. So on this mug, there's gonna be a downwards force due to gravity, which we call the weight. I'm gonna call that W for the weight. And the reason that this mug here doesn't fall through the table is because the table is pushing back upwards on it. And this is what we call a reaction force sometimes called the normal, sometimes called the contact. I'll just call it the reaction over here. And put simply at GCSE, we say that the reaction force is equal to the weight. But in actual fact, that's not necessarily true. The reaction force, it isn't equal to the weight force. In actual fact, the weight is going to be bigger than the reaction. Why is that? Well, it's because this object here is not stationary. Although it might look still here, and especially compared to maybe in reference to the camera that we have up here, if we sort of uh, maybe sort of zoom out and zoom out, we find that actually this table and the mug are on the earth, and the earth is spinning round. That means there needs to be a centripetal force which is acting inwards that stops this moving off into space. So uh, because the weight is bigger than the reaction, that means when we look at these two forces, there's effectively a net force which is acting downwards. And it's this net force here which provides a centripetal force. Now, does that go against Newton's first law, uh, you know, about objects which aren't moving? Well, Newton's first law always applies. And although this object isn't stationary, it isn't moving at a constant velocity, and therefore there must be an external force applied on this object to, to change its velocity, to keep it accelerating towards the centre of the Earth. If that doesn't make sense, I've got some more videos later on that do explain a bit more about circular motion.